Welcome to the session on architecting insecurity with microsegmentation. My name is Dennis Morrow. I'm a chief engineering architect for uh, VMware uh, in the office of the CTSO. And uh, the session is going to address microsegmentation as a mechanism for being able to transformatively improve security in uh, data center environments. Let's first consider the security problem that we're seeing today. We're seeing uh, relatively flat spending on IT increasing spending in security, and increasing spending in security as a fraction of overall IT spending. While at exactly the same time, we're seeing record numbers of security breaches and record losses due to those breaches. This is the formula for indicating that security, as we're doing it today, is not working. One of the drivers of the, uh, the problems with security is complexity. We have emerging and continuously changing vulnerabilities and attacks. Security innovation and happening at record paces, all of them uh, seeming to uh, require previous security capabilities in order to provide a comprehensive uh, security posture and compliance. Security solutions typically wanting to be the console used to manage policy and effectiveness in the environment, um, but all of them having different boundaries, different asset identifiers, and uh, different policy languages in order to express uh, the protections that they, they require. Changing guidance, um, just considering PCI alone, we've gone from PCI to uh, DSS 2.0 to 3.0 and more recently uh, to 3.1 uh, with no end in the evolution of guidance uh, in sight. Uh, this is complicated by our data center infrastructures and architecture that give us limited visibility. 75% uh, of the data center traffic in the average data center is east-west traffic, yet we're largely blind to it and have great difficulty putting both controls and visibility on this east-west traffic and data center environments. We also have weak alignment with endpoint protections, paying attention to system IDs and machine names, while network controls and protections pay attention to IP addresses and MAC addresses, that complicated by load balancing and network address translation and cluster behavior dynamics. More importantly, we have dynamic workloads, and those dynamic workloads are operating needing to scale up and scale down and load balance and failover, um, but in the face of uh, security controls that are often anchored to relatively static identifiers in the environment. In fact, with all of this complexity, it's a wonder we get security working at all. Gartner has recognized this, this issue and attributes an awful lot of um, breach activity to leveraging misconfiguration and policy uh, misalignment in uh, data center environments. In fact, complexity is the security problem from our perspective, and what we need is architectural capabilities that allow security to be architected in rather than added as an aftersight. Microsegmentation is a capability that VMware has introduced into the data center in order to allow simpler policy and better protection throughout the entire state and life cycle of an application's evolution. Uh, starting with virtualization, which provided isolation of the control flow, the memory address space, and the critical resources that allowed us to have multiple logical servers on a single physical server, we've extended that isolation and protection to being able to have a virtual switch that allows us to define and isolate a network for each group of machines that would make up an application, giving us distributed routing, distributed firewalls, and even a network address translation that allows every application or every service in an environment to have its own isolated network and its own isolated workloads. In fact, this is effective enough that we have as a new policy boundary that allows us to have protection follow the workloads, that allows us to have an always actionable context, and allows us to align controls across different security technologies so that they're all appropriately implemented and effective with respect to each other. Let's look at how this happens in the environment to make it concrete. First, microsegmentation in introduces the idea of containment and protection. The idea that if I have an application whose uh, protocol is vulnerable and malware detonates inside the data center, um, that we're able to confine what would normally be reconnaissance and lateral movement within a data center in an advanced threat attack to an area where this malware no longer has the ability to even craft a packet that can refer to an adjacent service or application uh, in isolation so that what we've done is essentially contained an infection. More importantly, we've wrapped an isolation boundary around each of the applications so that they have their own protection and their own stipulated policy associated with what is allowed and what is not allowed into the environment. 
Now this has a dramatic effect on policy. Rather than having all my protection at the edge of the data center with all of the policy aggregated into one place um, across all applications, I now can have policy placed right at the perimeter of the individual application or service, which means the policy can focus on each application or each service, meaning that the policy is more focused and more coherent. More importantly, when I need to change or adapt that policy to emerging recognized vulnerability or new kinds of attack behavior, I can do so without the fear of interfering with an adjacent application. Further simplification occurs by giving me intrinsic visibility into all of the east-west traffic. Traditionally, what we've had to do is, try, is to uh, hairpin traffic from a point inside the data center out to a protection locus and then back to uh, the inserted back into the application flow. And when we had to move applications or workloads, this created a huge problem in that the traffic had to be rerouted. We had to manage independently uh, the hairpinning um, in coordination with workload movement. What happens with microsegmentation is the ability to move both the protection and the workload in synchrony so that with one set of configuration we're able to have the protection continuously follow the workload in any placement in the data center environment. We also get perfect alignment. The ability to place not just a firewall and not just network address translation and the isolation that comes with it on an application or a service boundary, but also to place a comprehensive and growing set of security protections on those same boundaries so that all of the security technologies, whether it be a next generation firewall, an IPS, um, uh, sandboxing capabilities, or on-demand honeypotting, all of them can refer to exactly the same protection boundaries so that the endpoint protection, the network protection, and the uh, analytics capabilities unambiguously understand what's the scope of protection being provided and what are the controls that are both in front of and in back of any other control, allowing me to interpret in context any of the alerts, any of the logs that come from those protection mechanisms. That alignment lets us anchor to IDs that are much more resilient. Instead of on the left-hand side paying attention to IP addresses and MAC addresses, which can change, whose validity is not necessarily um, aligned with log retention over, for instance, years of time. Instead, we can have identifiers like microsegment IDs and VM IDs, which are resilient, which follow the workloads in whatever placement they exist and follow the uh, protection mechanisms in their respective orderings and their placement within the network environment, including the logical network environment. This alignment identi of identifiers allows us to get both better protection and better interpretation and actionable context when we're looking at logs and alerts. So both in providing protection and in interpreting what we see as a signal from the infrastructure environment, we have better and more actionable context. How do we get started in taking advantage of the, um, the promise that microsegmentation provides and giving us both simpler and more effective security over time? Well, getting started is best handled incrementally, picking uh, uh, an application or a service, and one at a time understanding what is the boundary that, exists, that should exist around it, and what are the uh, communications that should be allowed in and allowed out, and what is the endpoint protection posture that should be applied to that. Doing so is best done leveraging the expertise and experience of professional services organizations who've done that before. I'd like to introduce Graham Brown, Managing Director of Jaracom. Graham? Thank you, Dennis. Um, so Jaracom, we're a 10-year-old business. We come from a network and security background, and we're at the forefront of bringing NSX and the concept of micro-segmentation to the UK and European markets. Um, I thought it would be best if we could uh, go through a particular live case study that we've had with a, a, a customer scenario in the UK as I think that best illustrates how um, the advanced technologies uh, in the micro segmentation space really sort of meet the customer in terms of benefits. So what we've, what we've done here is just outlined uh, a, a particular scenario that we had earlier this year um, with, with, with a customer that has a specific set of requirements. Um, so 
it was a financial services based customer based out of the city of London. They were they were they were looking at a complete infrastructure refresh as the business is going through quite an aggressive growth model, aligned to a, a very aggressive strategy that takes it across multiple jurisdictions. Um, the their objective is to deliver financial products through bespoke web-based applications. You, you know, not uncommon within that sort of financial uh, financial environment. Looking to use technology to best service their customers in in in, in ever increasing number of markets. So when we started to speak to uh, this particular customer, they were about to invest in a traditional three-tier architecture in the data center, including sort of uh, perimeter firewalls, both from uh, protecting internal and external traffic. So a traditional sort of three-tier approach. Um, but as we started to introduce the concept of micro-segmentation into their environment, the penny really dropped uh, in terms of what the art of the possible would be. And the customer immediately saw, saw, saw the benefits of uh, what would be a traditional model. Now, it was, it, was a con you know, it was a confluence of different forces in terms of right timing and the technology being available. But we, we really were able to bring uh, VMware NSX and the micro segmentation uh, sort of concept to them in their production environment within a very short period and in this particular case we were able to do that within four weeks into the production environment. Now that gave, that gave an, um, a massive amount of flexibility in terms of what this particular customer was able to do and really changed the way that, that they were thinking about how they were looking to secure their uh, you know, secure their data set environment. Now, this is in a financial environment, so obviously compliance is a big is a big issue. But it was the simplification of the the processes, the procedures, the policies that the micro approach brought that really showed the difference for them. They they were able to recognise large operational savings of where they thought they were going to be because the managing the day to day management of the policies and taking the individual policies closer to the actual application as opposed to the perimeter of the data centre was so much easier for them to sort through because there's a lot of replication with regards to uh, standard applications within their environment and it 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 really made a massive saving and, and, and for once in a security landscape like this they were able to see um, you know they were able to see through a lot of the the mist and the complexity that a traditional model would have would, would have meant that they would have had to deal with so um, they also made um, you know physical cost savings within their environment in the sense that they were looking at east-west firewall architectures Obviously, it was a new deployment, and their thought process was, you know, a lot of the traffic was uh, east to west. There's a growing recognition that that, that that is absolutely the case. So they were looking at physical implementation, and that can get very expensive very quickly. So they were able to offset that potential spend against the investment that they made with VMware NSX. In addition, there were also some, um, for them, some very um, th some benefits that they hadn't thought about in terms of increased performance within their applications because of the requirements, uh, you know, better direction of traffic, not having to go through, uh, as Den Dennis mentioned early, earlier in his presentation, about the hairpinning of traffic back out to the perimeter firewalls. Um, and in general, their network environment within their data center was an awful lot more simplified than they previously thought possible. So the key benefits um, uh, for this particular customer was dramatically improved security in terms of policy and compliance and just a general simplification. Uh, infrastructure flexibility, which was another one of the benefits that uh, VMware NSX brings, the ability to be able to automate the delivery of networks and the security policies that go along with them. Um, massively simplified uh, processes. And the an overriding benefit of a very significant reduction in cost from where they thought they may be at the end of their project. So that gives a sort of a real world use case. And just sort of bring this session to a close. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dennis for the um, you know the very uh, to, to the, the, the the technical 
the sort of representation of the benefits of micro segmentation. But should anybody have uh, any questions following this presentation, then please feel free to contact uh, the, the Gyrocom team at the following uh, at, at, at the details shown up there on the screen. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the virtual conference today. Thank you.